Virginia is the home state of the NRA. It's one of the earliest states in the American Republic that helped fight against the British in the beginning of this nation's history, that understood the importance of an armed citizenry to the maintenance of a free state. And so I was happy to see today that thousands and indeed tens of thousands of Americans peacefully went to demonstrate at the Virginia State House in Richmond against this overreach by the, the Democratic government of Virginia. Now, Governor Northam, the same guy who's got this dangerous past, came out and tried to stir the pot toward the end of last week and over the weekend, claiming that a mob of unruly demonstrators were going to descend on the state house, that they were going to bring guns and pitchforks and burn things to the ground. I mean, they were trying to set this up as, a, as another Charlottesville-style riot. And nothing like that happened today. In fact, a Spartanburg native, Tommy Demsdale, who has uh, been involved in politics in my home county for a long time, drove to Virginia. I think you drove up yesterday, was there at the rally today and is driving home. Tommy, uh, let's just get your sense of this from the ground. I know you're driving home, so be careful on the road. But what would you say? 40,000, 50,000? How many people are in Virginia at the State House today? It's, it's, it's always really hard to get a good, clear count. I'm looking on some forums that are saying like 100,000. I, I don't know if that's true. I would guess a solid 40,000, but it was, it was packed tight. And any time that you see you know, pictures um, on Facebook, they don't even do it justice because there's several streets that that camera doesn't even, is not, able, not even able to pick up that are just packed to the gills with Second Amendment law-abiding gun owners. Um, and it was it was really a surreal experience to be able to go down there and experience that. Um, we we marched on the Capitol. We got up at five thirty this morning, and uh, we're walking through um, we're walking through <clears throat> Richmond uh, with AR-15s, and the cops are just beyond nice. We had we had one that was just a little kind of kind of odd little incident, but it wasn't hardly anything. Um, but it was. Everybody was seemed to be on the same side. If there was anybody that looked like they wanted to start trouble, they were immediately, you know, escorted out. Um, they did a fantastic job of, of taking care of us, and uh, it was a wonderful relationship uh, between us, each other, and the police. Um, there was zero arrest. Can you believe that? Like, it, let's say 40,000 people showed up. It would be an anomaly not to have at least four or five or six arrests, but there were zero and I think that really uh, goes to show the restraint of, uh, of law-abiding gun owners and how much we love peace. And uh, you won't see CNN and MSNBC really pushing these stories out because they don't have anything to report on. They don't have anything that matches their narrative that says, you know, that we want chaos and we well, want and violence. Tommy, and Tommy, and one, of the things, one of the things I saw earlier today, and, and by the way, you say that you've seen reports of up to 100,000 people if you had just a quick answer on this, because I want to ask you another question, but if you had to just guess, would you would you say forty thousand, fifty thousand is a fair estimate just by eyeballing it? Yeah, I would I would think so. In between forty and fifty, it was enormous. I mean, because I saw photos throughout the day, and I, I will tell you, it was really funny because some of the more liberal media outlets were showing the pictures from like three hours before the event started. Okay, because some of the early photos, I, I know that there was a section on the on the Capitol grounds that were roped off, that you could not have a firearm, you couldn't bring your concealed weapon inside the fence line. And then there was another section for those of you, and I know you did, who wanted to bring your firearms outside the fence line. And so the photo that, that was released by some of the media early this morning was two or three hours before the rally actually began. And there, was, there were already a lot of people there, but you could still see a lot of grass too on the state house grounds. And by early afternoon, when I saw folks who were there posting pictures, you couldn't see the lawn of the Virginia State House. You couldn't <laughs> see right. the ground. I mean, it was packed beyond measure. I would have guessed just by looking at the photo that I shared on Facebook earlier that you're probably looking at at least forty to 50,000 or more. And so, Tommy, I would ask you this because a lot of I saw a lot of people who were there, and it was not like you know, Governor Northam, as I pointed out earlier. I, it's disgusting to me that Ralph Northam tried to make this about race on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, given his background, as I shared earlier, here's a guy who sure. has a photo of him wearing a Klan-style outfit and blackface, very insensitive and racist behavior. As, as recently as medical school, this isn't like when he was a, 
uh, an eight-year-old kid or something, and his parents did it. This is a man who was in medical school when he did this, before he went into politics. And, and so he had to admit that was him last year. He nearly got driven out of office by the Democrats, even in Virginia. And, and, and then, of course, he's moved even further to the left to try to win the affection and accolades again of the, of the national media and the Democratic Party, which is in no small part why he has pushed for this gun grab. And then he, over the weekend, the governor of Virginia tried to make this about uh, uh, basically race, acting like all the folks that were going to descend on the state house today were white supremacists and trying to set it up as the next Charlottesville. And I saw, and I wasn't there, obviously, so I'll have to ask you, I saw photos of an awful lot of people of every background, Hispanic, African-American, Asian, non-Hispanic, white. It wasn't like this was just a white crowd there for a white supremacy event. There were many, many African-American groups who were there today protesting this gun grab just as surely as anybody else was. So doesn't it feel like a smack in the face to you and others who were there that the governor of Virginia tried to make y'all the racist when his past is racist? Absolutely. And, and just like even having anywhere from a personal conversation with someone all the way up to the state and national levels, when they have to pull the race card, you know you've got them. You know they don't have anything else that they have left to play in their hand because that's what they always play last. Um, and I was there. There was a, a wide margin of, of different nationalities, people from different backgrounds. There were liberals down there who believed in the Second Amendment. As a matter of fact, I seen a couple signs you know it wasn't abounding but i did see a couple signs you know uh gun rights or uh gay rights and it's just showing that this this issue crosses party lines there are democrats over there that really do care about their second amendment rights and they're not having any of it either i know a lot of these these counties uh that are now sanctuary counties were held by a majority of democrats so they're really overstepping their bounds here, and it's really going to hurt them in 2020. Well, when you say sanctuary, and for those of you just tuning in, we're speaking to Tommy Demsdale, a fellow Spartanburg uh, County resident and uh, very active in Spartanburg County conservative politics, who was at the rally in Virginia today. Tommy, when you say sanctuary counties, I want to be clear. These are Second Amendment sanctuary counties, not it's not uh, sanctuary Correct. cities or counties for <laughs> people who are illegally in the country. I, I believe, Correct. I believe. What we saw in Virginia today was, was hopefully the awakening of what I do truly believe is still a silent majority in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Over recent years, Democrats have turned out in really high numbers in Virginia, particularly in northern Virginia around Washington, and that's what's turned the state blue. But there are still many, many, uh, I'd say millions, hundreds of thousands and millions even, of Virginians who believe in, in the Second Amendment, who believe in limited government, and, and I believe maybe that this overreach by Governor Northam and the Democrat majority that just got elected uh, this past November, I, I hope this is a wake-up call to Virginians that you can't sit idly by and not show up in these midterm elections because Virginia has off year elections. I hope that in 2020, this helps to turn Virginia red in terms of presidential politics, state politics. I hope this is the beginning of the end of this liberal lurch in Virginia. And frankly, as I said earlier, this is a shot heard around the world, politically speaking, to where I believe other states have to sit up and take notice, whether it's California or New York or Illinois or other states that are flirting with the idea of infringing on Second Amendment rights. This is a, a shot heard around the world, so to speak, a shot across the bow. And Tommy, I, pre I just want to say thank you for taking the time to drive. I, I've driven that drive to Richmond. It's about seven hours, seven or eight hours. And yeah. appreciate y'all doing that. It was good to have some South kind of boys there. It was. It was fantastic to see such a swath of people from different states coming in. And I will say this before we close, that we can't spike the football on this too soon. Um, it takes being active. And if you're listening to this, you have to be active in your local politics because you can't sit by and think that this is never going to happen in South Carolina. Because there's a lot of things that we didn't think would happen here that have happened, and it's because we weren't vigilant. And, uh, well, I agree and with what, that. Yeah, I agree with that, Tommy Demsdale, and that's why in the next segment my guest is Hobart Lewis, who is the, I, I hope, leading candidate right now for Greenville County Sheriff. And you, people thought these yes, sir. local sheriff's races didn't matter. Well, ask people in Virginia if they matter. And I appreciate you, Tommy Demsdale, <laughs> being there at the rally in Richmond today. Good to see so many Second Amendment supporters descend upon the State House. And Richmond, y'all be careful driving home. 
Yes, sir. Appreciate what you do. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Guys, stick with us. We're back in three minutes. We'll talk to Hobart Lewis, candidate for Greenville County Sheriff, in three minutes. Right here on Common Sense. 